Our next guest is one of my favorite comedians. It's an honor to have him perform on our 100th show. Please welcome Louis C.K. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is exciting. My nipples are hard right now. They are. I just noticed it. Ooh, that kind of hurts. Um, hello, everybody. Nice to, nice to see you all. Uh, my name is Louie. Uh, I'm a 42-year-old I'm a, a divorced father. Um, I got two kids, uh, two girls. And uh, uh, it's, you know, the hardest part of being a parent really is just the days that you spend with your kids. That's really, ask any parent. You, you ask parents, like, is it the worrying? Is it saving? But no, it's just the days. <laughs> it's just every day. Wait, my kids wake me up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Okay, I don't get up at 6. Before I had kids, I blew off whole careers because I didn't want to get up. <laughs> like, just, oh, uh, I just won't be that then. And then you take them to school, and then you pick them up, take them home, and then it's like, how early can I put them to bed that isn't child abuse? Like how, like 4 p.m.? Putting your kids to bed is murder, because they don't want to do it. They're just laying awake, like, just like clockwork orange, just <laughs> so excited. And I just want, I just want them to, st I want to stop their ceaseless joy for life. So I can go watch Cash Cab and Jack Off and pass out. That's all I want. I love my kids, but I want them to stop at bedtime. So I just want them to go to sleep so I can eat all the ice cream in a house that would break their hearts if they knew how much ice cream. There's so much ice cream in the house, and I never give it to them. It's mine. I wait till they're sleeping, and I eat it in their room in the dark over their beds. And also, I'm a, I'm a divorced dad, so when I'm with my kids, it's just me and two little girls. And that's a challenge. There's certain things like, like we were in the airport the other day, was taking my kids somewhere in New York, and, uh, and they had to go to the bathroom. Now, when kids have to go to the bathroom, you don't get much warning. They don't go, hey, Dad, I kind of have to go. Should we start looking for a place? They just go, I'm going to poop in my pants in T minus five, four, three, <laughs> and it's over. So you got to find a place. Now, take yourself through that logically. I'm a man. I've got two little girls. I, I'm not allowed in the ladies' room. I mean, not me personally. I didn't get banned. I'm just, I can't go in the ladies' room because I got a big old penis, so I just can't go in. I'm not bragging that it's, it's not big, like, porny, thrusty penis. It's just big, like an old man's nose. Just kind of like, just, just kind of droop, you know, like a lava lamp, just bloop. It's really, it's, ups, it's big in an upsetting way. You don't want to, don't ever look at my penis. It's awful. Also, I'm not allowed in the ladies' room because I love looking at people's vaginas any time that I have that opportunity. You know, it's amazing that we still need separate rooms to pee in. As, as human beings, men are so disgusting that we can't be trusted to pee in the same room. So I have to take my girls to the men's room, which is awesome. Look, girls, nine penises. Nine farting men shaking the pee off their big old penises. So I gotta push him past that, and then we go in the stall. So I'm in a bathroom, airport stall with two little girls, all our luggage. There's a guy right here, right here. There's a guy here. This dude, I can see his foot. He's trying to get leverage to harder. Like he's struggling. I'm, we can hear him. We're sharing this moment with him. He's like, oh, he's struggling. Like he's giving birth in the 1800s with no midwife, just in a barn. Just an old country whore dropping another baby in the, in the hay. This is what this sounded like. And when he broke loose, it sounded like, like soup cans and pennies being shook out of an old duffel bag. And he's this close to my beautiful daughter's little tiny face, who, by the way, is shitting her brains out. This kid is no princess. She is cracking pipes. So she goes, then the other one, then it's my turn. I'm peeing, I'm trying not to fart in her faces. It's a challenge, that's what I'm trying to say. It ain't easy. But I love my girls. I'm trying to stay in shape. No, I'm not. I have a dog. I have a doctor who told me that I eat too fast. He said, you should eat slowly.
Because what happens is when you eat, there's a signal that goes from your stomach to your brain that says you're full. But it takes that signal 20 minutes to travel from your stomach. First of all, what a douchebag my body is. <laughs> that it takes 20, what's taking 20 minutes? If I stub my toe, I know it instantly. And that's twice the distance. <laughs> What's taking this signal 20 minutes? It's like, uh, 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 hey, Tit, what's up? What are you doing over here? My tit's like, dude, get up there. We're getting fat. Hurry up. Oh, excuse me. He goes, hey, hey, asshole, what are you doing? I don't... <laughs> All right, I've disgusted you enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of my favorite comedians Thank who you. just had the best set that any comedian has done on Lopez tonight, Louis C.K. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for you're, being you're, here on the Hundreds show. You're really. one of my favorites, too. I mean, of all time. I think you're one of the greats of all time. I'm serious, <laughs> man. And we've been friends a long time, but we've yeah. never formally hung out. No, no. Yeah. Because you live in New York. That's right. And I live here. That's so right. I'm going to New York this weekend. Oh, good. But when you're out here, do you like being out here? No, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. It's just a different... I think the thing about New York, people think that there are people are rude there. You know, and they, they, they're friendly in a different way. Like, a New Yorker will hold the door for you, but you've got to get through the door. Like... <laughs> You have like two seconds before the nice gesture becomes hatred, like seething hatred. You're like, go ahead, go! All right, jeez. I'm in a hurry, I wasn't before. I wasn't even going in that building, but I guess I have to. If you're making me. But people are used to being with each other. The thing about LA is that people are all in their cars and they don't think about the people in the other cars as human beings sometimes. And they, things get kind of, people honk all the time here. And I really believe this, George, that if you own a car and you ever honked your horn once, you're a piece of I really believe that. There's no legitimate reason to honk a horn. It's only selfish. It's supposed to be for safety, but what's that story that ends with, and then he honked his horn and everyone was saved? Like, what is that story? <laughs> I think the idea in our heads is you'll be driving and a kid will run out in front of you, so you'll honk and then kill him. <laughs> that's what would happen if you chose to spend your time beep. Well, he's dead now. At least he died in fear instead of joyful play. I got to announce his death with a horn. <laughs> but no, the reason people honk is to critique <laughs> that has already happened. What do you mean? Like what? Like what? Well, like, not, it's not to avert, it's just to go beep, hey. <laughs> like, why do you get to sound a trumpet because you're unhappy? Why does everybody beep, you shouldn't? It, it's no different than being in a store and someone gets in front of you and you just go, Ugh! Ugh! <laughs> it's stupid. The other reason people honk is because they're, they just don't want to wait. They don't, you're sitting in your car, yeah. you're sitting behind another car, the light turns green, and because he doesn't have your central nervous system. <laughs> you go, bah! <laughs> and I don't mean to accuse because I honk at everybody. And there's no... I do. I honk do at you? people on the sidewalk for being ugly. I'm the worst. <laughs> Beep, stay home, it's gross. <laughs> So I'm worse than anybody else. Be, but but tell, yeah. tell everybody the story about how you almost got killed yeah. driving, but not in an accident. Just tell them No, tell I almost what got happened. murdered <laughs> by a young fellow. <laughs> I was driving, I was, uh, I was living here at the time, and I was driving really fast. I was speeding because I was in a hurry. So I was making other people almost die <laughs> because I, my bad judgment. So I'm driving, and then I realize there's a car next to me who's driving fast. It's a kid, like, 19 years old, in a green Honda that he made at his house. <laughs> you know those cars? I do. He's got spiky hair. And uh, he keeps... So I'm like, good, I don't care. I, I'm, you know, let's both get to my show on time. I'm fine. <laughs> he thinks we're racing. I'm not racing. But so we get to the next red light, and he's looking at me, and he's going, Boo, like this, and I go, what happened to your hand? Like, I don't understand what this... I don't know what that means. If other people don't know the thing, it doesn't scare them. He's like, yeah, what? and I'm like, I don't know it. <laughs> so he goes, I go, I said to him, listen, I'm not trying to go fast relative to you. I just have my own independent reason <laughs> for my speed. 
and he got angry at all the words and everything, and <laughs> he pulled out a gun, oh. and he pointed it at me. So I go through the red light, <laughs> and he does too. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like, I, like I'm thinking, oh, he, he's trying to kill me, but he's not going to go through a red light. <laughs> you know? I'm sure he's thinking ahead to how that's going to hurt his insurance premiums in the long run. <laughs> so now I'm in a car chase. In L.A., I'm being chased, and it doesn't feel like a car chase. It's a beautiful day. I'm listening to Simon and Garfunkel on my radio. Being chased through, I am just a poor boy, though my story's seldom told. I So I call 911 on my cell phone, and I go, uh, there's a guy I I chasing me with a gun, and he's trying to kill me. That's what I said. And the lady goes, why is he doing that? I swear to God, why is he doing that? I'm like, is there a reason he could have <laughs> that you would not send anyone to help me? <laughs> like, if I tell her the story. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell her the story, and she's going to go, it sounds like you made a mess for yourself. We're not going to get involved. <laughs> so I did the same thing anytime I call a company, and I don't like what. You can hang up, you call again. Right. right? You get another person. You get another person. So I get another guy, he goes, 911, uh, what's your emergency? And I tell him, and helicopters show up right away. Helico I guess I just sound white enough to call in an airstrike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> you are fantastic. Hey, if you've ever seen Louis C.K. live, you have to see him live. Until then, watch Louis C.K. sitcom Louis, premiering June 29th at 11 o'clock on FX. My favorite comedian, Louis C.K. We'll be right back. I had a good day. I got a call today. Uh, my phone rang and, uh, and, uh, and I answered it. I didn't, I didn't recognize the number. I said, hello? And the person said, uh, please hold for the president. I was like, what? And then a voice comes on, it sounded like the president. And he's like, oh, it's, it's President Obama. And I said, that, no, that's not you. <laughs> and he goes, Yes, it is. And I said, no, there's no way the president would ever call me. So he goes, all right, we'll just hang up and call the White House and ask for me and you'll get through it. Maybe that'll convince you. So I said, okay, and I hung up. And I Googled the White House. And I got, like, the main number. And I called and said, hi, this guy was calling me. He said he was the president. My name's Louie. And she put me through. So all of a sudden, I'm talking to the president. And I said, well, what can I do for you? And he goes, uh, I don't know, what's, what's, what's up? <laughs> and uh, he said, where are you? I said, I'm in uh, Phoenix. And he said, uh, I heard they're all fags there. <laughs> I know, I know. And I was like, first of all, Phoenix is not known for that? Second of all, who says fags? Like, who says just fags? And then beyond that, how dare you, Mr. President? And he says, so go tell everybody who's gonna believe you, you fat douche. And he hung up. I was really surprised. That's what I would do. If I was the president, I would just bother people. I would just fly around the country, go to like Wisconsin, go to some guy's house at three in the morning and just drink out of the milk carton. So tell everybody, just piss on the floor. Who's gonna believe you? Yeah, go tell everybody the president pissed on your floor at three in the morning. Go ahead. To me, that would be the whole point of being president. Is getting to do that. I work a lot of different kinds of places. I, uh, sometimes I play clubs or theaters, and sometimes I play casinos. Casinos are fun because, first of all, they pay just dick shitloads of money. Just crazy. That's more than shitloads, because it's dick shitloads. I guess because some came out your dick, because it's even more. So, and then they just give the tickets to criminals or whatever. It's a weird, it's a weird show, a casino. 
But I like casinos because it's a place of extremes. When you stand at a casino gaming floor, you just see a life destroyed every 10 seconds. Just <laughs> constant, oh God, no, Jesus. It's just despair and old ladies with buckets of quarters. Just, I don't know if you've been to a casino, but old ladies are like the plankton of casinos. They kind of flow in the mouth, just dump all their quarters, and then get shit out dead out the back. There's a constant flow of buses and ambulances. in every casino. <laughs> and the dog, the dog's not a dog. That's not a dog. A dog sniffs and pees. This dog just stands there until at some random moment just just stuff just discharges, just a pink cloud. She dies like a year later and the cops come to her house. Hey man, there's a dog in the toilet. There's a dog in there. There's about a thousand shits on his face. <laughs> yeah, most of us don't get eaten. That's a very uncommon way for a human being to die, uh, is getting eaten. But we still have fear. We still have that fear that comes from having been in the food chain, but we don't know what to do with it. Especially in America, because there's not that much that's that scary. So we just have weird fear. Like, mm, I'm afraid of elevators. <laughs> If you're being chased by lions, you would not be afraid of elevators. <laughs> Sometimes I have fear that wakes me up in the middle of the night. Have you ever had that? Just in the middle of the night. I had this one night this summer. I was, this, I was sleeping alone in my house. And then like at four in the morning, I got woken up by a terrifying sensation, which was that something touched me. <laughs> Somebody touched my body. In the middle of the night, I felt this. Three times I felt and I woke up, <gasps> and there's nobody there, but I'm like, there's somebody here. <laughs> you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, there's someone in the room. So what do you do? You just lay perfectly still. Because these are the rules that you decide on. As long as I don't move, they can't begin harming me yet. Why would that be the case? instead of the opposite of that. Like someone's in your room with a knife over your bed. I wish he would move so I could stab him. <laughs> anyway, as I'm having all these thoughts, I happen to be looking at a chair that's in my room. It's very dark, so I can just make out that there's something on the chair, like a sweater or something, or a towel maybe and I'm kind of looking at it, and as I looked at it, it moved to the other chair, and I saw it, and I made a noise I'd never made in my whole life. I went, Aah! And I was immediately so disappointed that that's the noise I make when the shit goes down. Because you can't choose that noise. It just comes out of you. And then I start hitting the lamp on the table next to me. I'm just hitting it. Because when you're scared, you can't work little electronic-y, switchy things. Because fear turns your hands into just paddles. They just become like wooden paddles. Anyway, somehow the light actually went on and there on the chair was a cat. I don't have a cat. There's just all of a sudden a fucking cat in my room. And he's looking at me with that asshole cat face like... And I go, Aah! and he runs out the window. So he must have come in the window, that's what I figured out. 
He came in the window and then he walked on my body. I was just used to not have, my mom used to be aggressively poor. Like when we would go shopping, she would buy the worst version of everything, even if it wasn't cheaper. Like just to go, we're poor. Like she would buy saltine crackers with no salt on them. Saltless saltine crackers. And you could tell they had salt on them, they're pockmarks. But they made them with salt, and then the guy in the saltine factory takes his Discover card and scrapes off the salt or something. <laughs> he was so angry, he came back. He came back to me. He said, why didn't you tell me that you live here? And I said, because I don't have to tell you anything ever. Right? There are no words that I must say to you. Also, I didn't want to ruin your thing. That's your favorite thing you were doing. You love that. Making people not be places. Also, I make more than you. I just don't give a shit about myself. Anyway, he didn't say anything after that because, uh, well, the whole thing didn't really happen. <laughs> I mean, well, it's, it's not true, but it's as, it's as true as anything that does happen. I mean, really, anytime anybody says anything to me, I decide what they said anyway. The, tr the truth of this story, and I won't lie to you again, but here's what really happened. I was sitting in the courtyard looking like shit, that's true. And the guy was looking at me. But then the rest of it I just made up in my head, just, just an angry, hateful, rich dick. He probably want to kick me out. And then here's what I would say. And then he would do this. And then I would say these three really cool things right in a row. And of course he set me up for all of them because I'm him too. It's kind of hard to lose an argument when you're both people and it's taking place in your brain. And then in reality, he really did come up to me. And he said, are you new to the building? And I said, yeah, I just moved here. And he said, oh, welcome. He was so nice. He was incredibly nice. And he's been, for the last years, my favorite person in the world. He's George, my neighbor George. He's probably watching. I love George. He's the greatest. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, everybody. Uh, hello. <laughs> nice to be here. How are you doing? Good. 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 Nice to be here. I, uh, I'm broke. Anybody else broke? Uh, you ever get so broke that the bank starts charging you money for not having enough money? That's fucking broke, man. Bank called me up, they're like, hi, we're calling because you don't have enough money. I'm like, I know. She's like, sir, you have insufficient funds. Well, that's a good way to put it, too. I agree with that. I find my funds to be grossly insufficient. Thanks for calling. Why are you mad at me? I don't understand what, how is this something I'm doing to you? She's like, sir, you only have $20. That's not enough. You can't only have $20. I'm like, look, I'm not being broke just to fuck with you. I just really don't have any money. I'm not trying to be a dick. I just, my life is shitty. What? So they charged me. They charged me $15. That's how much it costs to only have $20. And here's the fucked up part, now I only have five. What did I pay the 20 to the $15 for if I don't get to have the $20 that I paid to have? I paid the fucking money, where's my 20 bucks? That's like going to the movies, you buy your ticket and they go, get the fuck out of here, go home. 
But I paid for the movie. No, you paid for a ticket, motherfucker. You didn't pay for a movie. I can't, I'm like, if it's free, I can't fucking afford it. <laughs> Somebody could come up to me, take this, it's free, fuck, that costs nothing, I can't afford that, that's more than I have. I gotta raise ten bucks to be broke, that's where I'm at. That's not good. That's bad. Apparently some of you are in the same fucking position. <laughs> How's your economy doing? <laughs> Shit. No, I'm glad you appreciate that story. Not everybody appreciates that story. I told that story about a week ago in Orange County, California, all these rich motherfuckers looking at me with their boat hands and their golf shirts and penny loafers. They're all looking at me like, well, yeah. Like, you were financially irresponsible, you had to pay the price. I don't frankly see what you're angry about. The bank has a right to accrue a fee, clearly. Fine, take it all, you motherfuckers. I don't give a shit. You ever get so broke it just becomes funny to you after a while? You go, like, Jesus Christ! I have no fucking money! Jesus! People call you, hi, we're gonna turn off the. Yeah, fuck it! Turn it off, man! Turn it off! I don't give a shit! When can you make a payment? I ain't paying anything! What am I gonna fucking pay you with? I fucking sold the phone. I don't need it now. <laughs> Damn it, man. This shit's brutal. I live in New York, too, and man, there's, uh, you can't get along with no money in New York. You gotta live in these tiny places. I have this apartment, right? And uh, we have this... Okay, here's the toilet, right? I'm on the toilet. This is how small the apartment is. The, the tub is right here, like right next to the toilet. Then there's a wall, like right fucking here. Like right... There's no... You gotta, you get squeezed in, and here's the worst part, I have to put a foot in the tub <laughs> to use this toilet, because otherwise I gotta go like this, who shits like this with their knees together? I'm pooping. You gotta fucking dig in. Burn on a fire. You gotta get into it. And in order to achieve, to achieve this position, I have to put a foot in the tub. Now try putting a foot in the tub when your pants are at your ankles. You can't. They both want to go, right? So I have to take off the whole pant leg, which means I have to take a shoe off every time I take a shit. Every time. And sometimes that's okay, but a lot of times it fucking isn't okay. <laughs> sometimes I didn't plan effectively, and I'm ten blocks from my house, and I've got to shit. You know when you you can't run because you'll bounce it out, so you gotta kind of glide, and you're going, come on, god damn it! Then you stop occasionally. Fuck, fuck, fuck! <laughs> come on, man. God. Okay, I'm gonna make it. 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 And I always get to this point where like, I'm gonna make it. I'm fucking fine. I'm fine. 
mind over matter. I'm going to make it. And then I see my house. I just see it. And my eyes tell the rest of me, fuck it, man, let go. We're here. There's no need to hold on anymore. We've made it. Because my eyes are fucking retarded, and they don't know the difference between the outside and the inside of my house. So now I got like Olympic seconds to fucking get in my house and open the door to the bathroom. And I gotta take a fucking shoe off? Are you? I have shit my pants 13 times. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face with that. All right. <laughs> oh, shut up. Ah, you better leave now. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> anyway. No, no, fine. Well, sorry, blah, blah. Uh, so anyway, no money. I guess I'm white trash officially, and uh, white trash is a very funny expression to me because it's the only racial expression you can use, and no one gets offended. Nobody gives a shit when you say white trash. Nobody gets all quiet like, hey, man, why are you talking like that? That's not cool. <laughs> Nobody defends white trash. You're gonna be talking to the most liberal hippie in the world. You go, hey, I saw this guy, he was white trash. He'll go, ha ha, fuck that guy. White trash piece of shit. Let's laugh at him because he's poor and he's starving to death. Fucking loser. He lives in a trailer because he can't afford a house. Let's go shit right in his face right now. That's why they're funny to us, because they're fucking poor. He wears stupid clothes, because they're fucking free, so he can eat. Ha fucking ha! Man, it's depressing in this country. You ever, go, like, you ever drive through whole towns where everybody's life is shit in the whole town? Everybody's just standing in front of their house like... <laughs> <laughs> oh man this is a weird election too people got weird man i was driving through this town in upstate new york this guy's standing there with a sign that says honk if you love america now i love america but i'm looking at this guy and i'm thinking what the fuck are you doing man this is your day you're gonna stand at this red light with this fucking sign what is wrong with you and he's looking at me because he's angry that i haven't honked yet and now he's trying to intimidate me he's like fucking honk motherfucker honk. and then i decide you know what i'm not honking and you know why because fuck this guy that's why he doesn't get to decide this rule for the whole fucking intersection just because he's got a magic marker and no job now i have to honk or otherwise i'm a fucking commie fuck him what if i go up to him with a t-shirt that says lick my balls if you love jesus come on man you gotta do it you gotta do it what are you a jew lick him Louis was saying that he's had uh, a few radio interviews he wants to talk about really quickly. Because ah. he goes around the country and he's he's on a lot of radio shows. Yeah, everywhere. Are yeah. we one of the better ones, Lou? Oh, you're the, the best. I mean, there's not... Well, you have no, to say that because you're here now. No, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Is it between us and <laughs> I wouldn't do that? No. And then someone else is going to call you out like, oh, come on. I was just saying it because, you know... I was yeah, who, who am I offending that I care about right now? Neil Bortz. Neil <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Bortz. I don't know Bortz. who that is. But no, I did. I, there's, both of these things happen in on shows that I like, actually. Uh, but and I don't even remember. The first one was uh, just see if you can guess who the person was in the room that did this in each show. You don't know the <laughs> right. names, but the type of person it was. Yeah, I'm talking about. Once I was talking about my uh, ankle being worn out. Uh, it's a bit that I did. Heather know. Mills. <laughs> and I go. <laughs> I don't even understand that. Septic, <laughs> septic model. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just talking about people with no legs. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. No legs? <laughs> You said ankle, so I was assuming. <laughs> oh, ankle. Oh, oh, I. Oh my God. I didn't really? say it was a home run, Lou, but I didn't, <laughs> wow. I didn't realize. Better like, than a thirsty uh, mouth. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> what? Thirsty mouth? Thirsty, <laughs> thirsty mouth. Oh, I think thirsty no! Mouth. I think he's a thirsty mouth. That's no, what I thought he said, said too. thirsty mouth. Oh. Yeah. Maybe I ought to leave the mice jokes <laughs> to Jimmy today. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou, go ahead. They're in his wheelhouse, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I was talking about um, being 40. I'm now I'm 41. And uh, and how when you go to the doctor, they don't try to fix anything anymore. I go to the doctor because my ankle hurt for three months. And the doctor just says, uh, yeah, your ankle's worn out. That's all. Wear and tear. Just take take lots of a leave. Yeah, that's what he said. And I'm like, well, what if I was an athlete? And he says, well, you're not an athlete. So, no. <laughs> so we don't have to we worry Keep about those it. options off the table. And so I'm grousing about that and getting some laughs. And so a person in that studio, this was on the radio, on the phone, goes, um, Really? Because I would think at 40, you would still uh, be getting some uh, solutions from the doctor. The hole. Yeah, isn't that weird that it the was... The hole. The chick. I mean... They insist just all these... Just shuts, and all the laughter stops. Yeah. That's... I would think that at 40, you would, the doctor would still come up with some options for you there. Thank you. Why did... Fun crypt And so and there's, I... a pa- there's a pause, <laughs> and then I go... Yeah, he didn't, is what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 Where I'm going with this oh. is that he didn't. That's the uh, engine of this piece of comedy. That's that's how it functions, is that it didn't. Get it, dummy? What are you helping by correcting the piece yeah. of comedy? You would think. The whole point of any uh. piece of comedy is that you're inflating and exaggerating <laughs> to a comedic effect. So it's the easiest thing to cut the legs out from under it. <laughs> it's the easiest, stupidest, most worthless Oh, hope, thing to do. I hope you gave her this speech. No, I didn't. I just said, I said, I packed all of that into, uh, he didn't is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I just sat there so mad. And then the rest of the interview, I'm just like, yeah, uh-huh. And, and just answering questions, uh, yes or no. And I just want to get off the phone. Well, she doesn't understand because, again, we've said before that when, that when cer- certain holes just leak brains and humor out of them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why when they're on a radio show, they just get up and their seat has funny on it. Uh, <laughs> but the mic has none in it. <laughs> no, it's like it's suck. like the fun of the show is a balloon. And she literally put a... Vagina on the side of the balloon and let the fun let the fun out. They insist on having the women part of these oh. morning shows. And then there was an, that it. was somewhere in Pennsylvania. I don't remember where. And then there was yeah. a, uh, a show in Albany, and it's a show I really like doing. But uh, uh, we're talking about um, um, my kids, and I go, yeah, I've got two kids, and I'm divorced now, so I have my kids with me by myself all the time because uh, we share custody. And it's hard. I have to have uh, like I had to t- take a dump the other day, and I had to do. Can I say that they're not going to? Oh yeah. I had to do it with the door open because I got two kids to watch. Nobody else is home, so I, 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 uh, I can't unless I'm going to gather them into the bathroom to watch Daddy take a poop. I've got to <laughs> have the door open while I'm watching the kids. Right. And she goes, same person basically, just keeps moving other cities <laughs> within the same morning somehow. Same general, same different day. Show. <laughs> yeah. She goes. Really? Because your daughter's seven. I would think that she could take care of herself while you're doing that. Oh, my God. That's not the point. Oh, my idiot. God. That's not the point. And I, 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 I was so, I was like, well, uh, yeah. And then I went the other way with that one. I'm like, okay, that's how you want to do your show? Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I guess that's true. I guess she could have. You're right. Just Bl- just clotheslined uh, your your jokes. Uh, Why would the Jews go into the bar if they owned it? Wouldn't they have been there already, <laughs> going they, over the books and the they... deliveries? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the guy a guy who goes into a bar with a duck on his head, and the bartender says, "What do you want?" or something, and it's always the duck says something. <laughs> really, because I didn't think the ducks had the power of speech. <laughs> yes, and why wouldn't the bartender comment on the duck as opposed yeah. to just speaking? Really, because usually when I go to a bar, they don't even talk to me; they just seem real busy. They're an easier way to keep them from jumping on the bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wouldn't a duck fall off? <laughs> They are horrendous when it comes oh to radio. Oh, God. They're like Andy Rooney with breasts. There's no, no but here's the thing them. is that I know m- many, many funny women, and I don't think it's a female trait, no. but no man has or will ever do that <laughs> no. in the history of my life. You kind of know what's going on. and Because mm-hmm. and... only a hole would be that dumb. But <laughs> as a sex, it, I don't believe that it's a trait. On no, radio. I just make there's an uh, in improv, which is a boring art, but it's there's an art to it, which is it's called yes and. That's the rule of improv. It means that if somebody posits a idea, you don't say nah because you've just destroyed the whole show. <laughs> you say yes and you add something. You right. you accept their premise and you add to it and you keep building that way. You don't just go no. 
Although I did improv once, and I just just because it, I was, it made me look good and made them all look bad. I was the no guy, and I shut down every scene that started. They're like, "Oh, sir, sir, where's isn't this the restaurant where everybody's crazy?" I'm like, "No, it's a fine restaurant. There's nothing going on." <laughs> oh, okay. I, Could you please tell me where the silly restaurant is? I never heard of any place like that. Yes. Why would anyone go to a place uh, like that? Would you want to eat something? Yeah. yeah and everybody just, oh. Yeah, but I got huge laughs. I'll have the steak. Yeah. <laughs> that's that hilarious. Oh, is that that's great? Really good. <laughs> Screw them. You think improv is a little bit? It is a little bit boring, isn't it? Most times. Yeah. A lot of times I've seen improv. It's very good. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid holes. They just uh. wreck. Why are they such a staple? Oh, it really is. Now it. But really, oh, even God. more than that noise, it's that thing of like questioning what is the value of that? What do you yeah. think? Are you? Is this like the sixty minutes of my bits? Yeah, is this yeah. like your your exposing? My bits so that they won't work and we your show will be into boring. We Louis C.K.'s bit and found he wasn't being completely accurate. We visited this doctor that has done much work on 40-year-olds. It turns out he offered many solutions to Mr. C.K., which he did not bring up during the comedic ankle. bit. I went in with a hidden Wait, camera it, and it, said I have on. a problem ankle. Stop it. He offered me a lot of solutions. No, no, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, there it is. The you hole. know you're right. <laughs> oh, Anthony. Oh, you know you're going to go to hell for this. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, there, that's the one. I don't get it. Yeah. Oh, guys. Uh huh. <laughs> that's the best one. It's like, oh, guys, like, uh, stop the craziness now. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys. Let's not make fun of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the number one rule. Uh -huh. Let's just not uh -huh. make fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. They're devoid of humor. Mm. And um, if there are people that are funny in the room, it's just over. Mm. And I don't know why program directors or shows think it's a good thing to have that. We were told so many times, you guys, I think maybe a girl in there, a woman... Mm. Her side, her point of... No. No. Why do we want that on this show? <laughs> if you stumbled upon a woman who is really funny and added things, mm. then maybe you'd put her on the show. But to have somebody for... Because that's the way they get put in is... Yeah. You're, okay, and you're here to be on the give the women a side yeah. of the show, which has to be contrary, mm -hmm. has yeah. to be yeah. just worthless and shut downy. Because the women will look at you like you're keeping them in control. Yeah. The guys think they're in charge, but we all know uh, who's we all know. Yeah. Yeah. really in charge here. Huh? Huh? Gang rape on the console. <laughs> right. Show her who's boss. <laughs> we just like doing horrific things to women on our show. <laughs> Not having them as an equal to what oh, we're trying to do every morning. What are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Give it up for Mr. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. I had a good day today. I went to the movies. And, uh, you know, before the movie now, they show you that whole presentation where they explain that you shouldn't download movies on the Internet. Because you're hurting all the people that work on the movies. They need to feed their families. So you shouldn't download movies on the internet. And I thought, holy shit, I had no idea. I just didn't know you could download movies on the internet. <laughs> that is great news. I'm going to download all of them. I went to the park today. I like going to the park because I can masturbate without my wife bothering me. So, uh... <laughs> So I'm at the park and this, there's these no drinking signs. And uh, it doesn't say no drinking, it has a picture of like a martini glass with a line through it. Are those really the people causing the problems with the drinking in the parks? Shouldn't it be like a bottle in a bag with a line through it? Are there guys out there at three in the morning? Hey! So, uh, yeah, my wife and I got in a big fight today because um, she says I don't listen to her, and I don't. But it's not because I don't love her, blah, blah, blah. 
It's because she sucks at talking. I swear to God, she sucks at it. When she starts telling a story, it immediately turns into another. And like, she takes every story and divides it into 50 stories that each branch out into encyclopedias about other stories. And I try, because I love her. When she starts talking, I'm like, oh, I'm locked in. I'm going to listen to the whole thing. But somehow I just, ugh. I can't, I drift. I can't do it. Every story, she's like, oh, you know when my sister was in college? Not when she went to Antioch. You know how she transferred because of that, you know, because that guy that got weird. Not the little guy, the guy with the beard. You know, the thing, I think he was a ring. What, what are you talking about? Pick a thing. That's what I do. I go, here's the story when I tell it. I bought a tomato and I ate it and it was good. Anyone can follow that story. It was about a tomato the whole time. No, she's great. She is. I love her. I mean, I, without her, I'd be living under a bridge somewhere. God, that would be great. How, how great that would be. I would love that. We have a baby, and uh, oh my God. Uh, when you have a baby, everything changes. And people tell you, they go, your whole life is going to change. And they were right. I think the biggest difference between my life now and before we had the baby is that now we have a baby. <laughs> we have a baby. You know, that's a huge responsibility. You got to not leave them outside. You got a lot of stuff you got to take care of constantly. <laughs> No, it's great though. My father told me when I was a kid, he said, you're not going to know what it is to be a real man until you hold a tiny baby in your arms. And I didn't understand that then, but I do now because I held my baby in my arms and I felt like a real man, you know, because I, I could crush that guy. Kind of, <laughs> no, uh, I, it's hard raising a baby because, you, you know, they, they, they're crazy. They're out of their minds. We're, it was Easter, okay, and, and we're painting eggs, and uh, so she bro bro broke an egg. So, of course, she's going to cry about that for, like a bitch for like half an hour. So, and I go, it's okay, honey, it's just an egg. And I give her another one, and she threw it at me. And then she just starts throwing eggs. And we're trying to stop her. We have like this rule that we can't say anything negative to her. So we're trying to stop her from throwing eggs without saying any negative. <laughs> Like going, oh, uh, how about how about not throwing the eggs? That would be interesting. <laughs> Finally, my wife goes, you know, we were having a nice Easter, but now we're not, and it's because of you. <laughs> yeah, that's really positive, honey. Why don't you just punch her in the face? Just punch her right in the face. You might get over that. The worst word a baby has uh, when, when she learns it is the word why. I hate the word why. I, I really hate it. And, it. and it's not, look, like, I used to judge other parents, but I don't anymore. Like, you know when you're, like, at McDonald's and you see a parent, a mother or father with a kid, and the kid looks so cute and she's eating fries, and the, and the mother or father's like, oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And then a little kid says something like, Mama, why are those people standing there? And she goes, just sh shut up and eat your fries. <laughs> and you go, what a horrible mother. Why doesn't she just answer her? How hard can it be to just answer her? You know what? You don't know what you're talking about. Because when a kid asks a question why, you tell her why, and she wants to know why that, too. And then you tell her why that, she wants to know why that. She takes every idea and deconstructs it to the point, I don't even know who I am anymore when we finish talking. The other day she's like, Papa, why is there rain? Oh, because the water fell out of the sky. Why? Because it was in a cloud. Why? Because it, it came from the lake. Why? Because it got hot and it evaporated. Why? Because the earth is hotter when it's nearer to the sun. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Why? Because I didn't pay attention when it was taught to me in school. I didn't listen to anything anybody said to me. Why? Because I have no moral compass and I'm useless. I've never done the right thing. Why? Because my parents didn't raise me right. They didn't even try. 
Why? Because they just had sex in a car and here I am and they've just been waiting for me to get out of their lives. I'm only stopping to be polite. It goes on for hours, hours. It gets so abstract. She's like, why? Well, because some things are and some things are not. Why? Because things that are not can't be. Why? Because then nothing would be aren't. There wouldn't be any not things. Why? Eat your fucking fries. Shut the fuck up and eat your fries. Fucking little motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Now she talks, man. They talk and you have to say shit back. You can't just go, Papa, look at the uh, bird. You can't just go. <laughs> I always want to do that. Like, she says really weird shit sometimes. The other day she said to me, Indian beauty. I was like, what? Indian beauty. I was like, what does that mean? Indian beauty. Yeah, but what do you mean by that? She just looks at me and I go, yeah, don't talk unless you have a sentence to say, all right? Because that's a huge waste of my fucking time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like the other day, she wants to say, excuse me. She says, accuse me. But that's not even close to meaning the same thing, all right? Accuse you of what? That you don't know how to fucking talk? Yeah. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> fucking shut it till it works, all right? Fucking kid is full of shit. Her favorite song is the alphabet song, right? That's what I call it, the alphabet song. You know what she calls it? She, the name of the song is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. She says, I want to sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. I'm like, oh, well, now let's not sing it, because you fucking ruined it for whoever's listening. That's not the title of the song, you fucking idiot. That's the fucking song. Jesus, mother fucking Christ. <laughs> anyway, so that's my kid. I know I'm going to hell, but uh, so is every other parent, because you're all the same. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> hell is, a, is an interesting thought, though. What is hell really like? I always wonder, is there like a schedule in hell? Like they tell you first, okay, you go in that room and then some monster fucks you up the ass for a thousand years. <laughs> then you come out and you're like, woo! <laughs> woo! Man, that was, mm. <laughs> Like don't, don't go in there again, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> to the next person, I, if I were you, I'd wait and they go, all right, now you're scheduled to go in there. You go in there and they rip off your head. I would, you know, they always show, like, in these pictures, they rip off your head. But then they got to sew it back on so they can keep fucking with you. Like, they rip it off. And, all right, put them back together because otherwise you can't torture them anymore. And then, but what if you're in hell and you're not sure what's next? Like, they go, just go wait over there for a minute. And you're waiting, like, in a hallway in hell. And some demon comes up to you. Come over here, you suck my dick. <laughs> now you're blowing this demon and you're in hell and it's awful. And he comes in your face, runs away laughing, whatever. But what if after you blow that demon, some guy in charge of hell walks in and he goes, you know, you didn't have to blow that guy. <laughs> he just hangs out here. He's not part of your damnation or anything. <laughs> what did you blow him for? <laughs> he said, suck my dick. So say no. What are you, pussy? Jesus, man, stick up for yourself. Fucking loser. He blew Joey. You believe this guy? I was uh, walking past a, uh, uh, a, 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 like a yoga spinning fucking people's place and the door was open and I look inside and this teacher, this guy's standing in front of a class and he's just going like this and he's going, come on, come on, come on, do it, come on. And everybody, all strangers that don't know each other are going like this and he's going, come on, come on, come on, all right, come on. And I thought, what fucking power this guy has. I wish I had that power over people. Even without the conceit of a class. Wouldn't it be great to be able to do that, like in an airport, a bunch of people waiting at a gate for a plane, it's like, come on, come on! Come on, everybody do this! 
I'm like, oh, fuck, all right, Jesus, why am I have to do this? It's bullshit, I'm late, and I gotta fucking do this. Come on, you two, come on! I actually took a yoga class, and it was great. It's amazing the shit they, they get you to do that you didn't know what you could do. I had, was doing stuff I had no idea I was capable of, like sucking two penises at the same time. I didn't think I could do that. Mine and his. How did I, I would, it's actually that flexible, I could sword fight in my own mouth. All right, good night, thank you everybody, enjoy the show. Thanks man, thanks for coming guys. You should do your job. That's what I'm trying to say. You should do your job. Because it's your job. Because you're the person standing there doing that thing. So just do it. Do the shit out of it. Why wouldn't you? It drives me crazy when someone has a job that they don't like, so they do it shitty. What kind of a response is that? If you do it shitty, isn't it worse for you? Like, I travel, so I, I have to, I need help all the time. And I, like, I rent a car, and I always want another one. I'm crazy. So I get a car, I'm like, I don't like it, I want another car. So I go to the counter, can I get a different car? And sometimes I get the person who's like, why? Because I'm a dick, give it to me. What, what do you, what do you, what's wrong with it? I'm crazy is what's wrong with it. You're, you're wearing a vest that matches the building. Just do the thing that is the point of the place. Ugh. Why? You know why? Because you're 20. That's why. Because you're a 20-year-old little c and you have no idea how the world works. Because you think you deserve better. You think you're too interesting a person to have a shitty job. Every 20-year-old that I encounter behind the counter gives me that little, oh, this job sucks. Yeah, that's why we gave it to you. <laughs> because you're 20, which is a mathematical guarantee that you have no skills and nothing to offer anybody in the world. You're 20 for two decades. You've just been taking and sucking up. Education and love and food and iPods, just sucking it up and, and judging it. No, it's pretty good, but not really, you know, I like that one. You've just been selecting and absorbing shit that you didn't fing earn for two decades. Three presidents, that's how long you've just been a burden. You're like an orange that's rotting on a tree, and the tree's like, get the, get, this thing's crazy. Oh, I don't want to go, let me stay. <laughs> you're 20, you've never done any, if you're 20 years old, I guarantee you, you have never done anything for anybody, ever. <laughs> never. Yes, you went on a school trip to Guatemala, and they told you you helped, but you totally did not help. The guy was like, I got a mudslide on my house, and now I got to babysit a f***ing college kid. Why do I have to do this? <laughs> Jesus. Eh. Just take her picture with a shovel and send her home so she can put it on Facebook. <laughs> I had an amazing experience in Guatemala. I was probably amazing. And I really helped those people. I helped them. 